Hi guys, this is Algebra 1. Lesson 6 slash 2, exponential functions. In this lesson, we'll be able to describe and graph exponential functions. So the key vocabularies that you need is asymptote, constant ratio, and exponential function. Pay attention to these vocabularies in this lesson. All right, let's uh, start with exploring reason. Use two pieces of eight and a half inches by 11 inches paper. Do you know what that paper is called? It's not an A4, it's not a B4 paper. You probably know this as a letter, size letter, size paper. Fold one of the pieces of paper accordion style for five folds for the other in half or five folds. After each fold, unfold each piece of paper and count the total number of rectangular sections. So one paper, you're gonna fold it accordion style. One, two, so you're gonna fold it one by one. One, so like this way, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, five folds. You're gonna fold it five times. Again, one, two, three, four, five. This is accordion style folding. You're gonna fold it five times. Another paper, you're gonna fold um, the another paper half and half every time for five folds. So we're folding five times for each paper, but this time, this paper, you fold it half, then you fold it half, then you fold it half, fold it half, you fold it half, five times, okay? So what do you notice about these two different types of folding? This is the half folding style, and this is the accordion folding style. How many more pieces do we have? How many more pieces do we have for each fold? The half folds will increase a lot faster. Why? Let's, let's record what we observed first. Find a pattern relating the number of folds to the number of sections for each folding style. What do you notice? So what did you notice? for the pattern. Every time you fold an accordion, so this is one piece, right? One piece. But if you fold it once, you have two piece, and then another three piece, four piece, five piece, and six piece. So every time you fold the accordion style, your sections increase by one, right? So why don't we why don't we draw a table to describe the pattern? So accordion style. This is the number of folds and this is the number of sections. If you fold it zero times, you start with one piece of paper. If you fold it once, you have two pieces of um, rectangles. And then if you fold it another times, so you get three and, and so on. So every time you fold it, you just get one more piece of sections, okay? What about half folds? So you still start with one paper without any fold, right? So that's one section. But if you fold it once, you have two sections. If you fold it half again, you get four sections because you had two sections, right? So two sections. If you fold it half again, it becomes four sections. And then if you do that five times, you're gonna get 32 sections. So every time you fold it, your sections double up. 
right? So let's require the pattern in words. The number of sections increases by one each time for accordion style and doubles each time for folding in half. Okay, this is part A. Part B, explain why the two different folded styles of paper produce different results. Why do we have different results? Folding in half, you fold half, so you're dividing each section, whatever you have, you're dividing all sections in half. But the accordion style, you're just folding once and twice, and then you're just you're just folding whatever um, is left, whatever is bigger, right? The bigger section. So you're not dividing all sections. So there's no overlapping um, lines. So let's write that down as well. The number of sections increases at a much faster rate for folding in half because it divides each and every section. Okay. Why are we experimenting the folds? Well, this looks very similar to exponential function, okay? Folding in accordion style, you're adding one by one, but exponential is more like folding in half. So your, your numbers are gonna increase much faster. So think about what are the characteristics of exponential functions as we go over the lesson today. Look at example one. Key features of the function x, uh, f of x equals two to the power of x. Okay, we're gonna try to figure out what are some key features for the exponential function. So what does the graph of f of x equals two to the x power look like? What if we have a variable in the power and your, your power, your exponent keeps changing, right? So think about this. If your x is zero, then your f of x which is f of zero is two to the power of zero, which is one, okay? If x is one, then where do you put the x? Your f of one, which is two to the power of one is equal to two. So then if your x is one, your, your y is two. If your x is zero, your y is one. Do you see the points? That's because when you plug in your numbers for x, that's what you get for your function value. Same thing for two. If x is two, then f of two is equal to two to the power of two, which is two squared is four. What about the negatives? If x is negative one, then f of negative one is equal to two to the negative one power. And what did we learn? What is the property of exponents for negative powers? You get a fraction. Instead of multiplying the base by itself once, you're gonna divide the base by itself once from one. So that's one over two to the first power. If x is negative two, then f of negative two is equal to two to the power of negative two power, which is one over two square, and that's one over four, okay? 
So you can see those points on the table as well. So figure out some points and plot it on the graph and try to connect them. You do not see a straight line like you're used to. Exponential functions will not have a straight line. It will grow, your numbers will grow and decrease exponentially, which means super fast. It's a curved line, okay? So it's gonna look like this or like that, or like that, or like that, okay? So, but it's not gonna be straight. Your exponential functions are gonna be curved. Okay, do we have an, uh, uh, do we have the line going through the origin? Do we have a zero comma zero point? No, we can, do we, can we ever get zero val value of zero for y? No, even if your x is equal to zero, then all base to the power of zero is one. So if your x is in the exponent, that is called an exponential function. And it will always have a 0, 0,1 point by default if there's no other transformation added. Okay, so no, it doesn't go through the origin. It goes through the point 0, 0,1. That is a special point. Okay. All right, so the characteristics of this graph is continuous between and beyond the x values shown, continuous, which means your line is not cut. It's not, uh, it's not uh, disconnected. They're all connected, right? All the points on the line are connected. So all the domain is real numbers. So all the X values you can have are all possible real numbers. Okay, keep that in mind. And the function gets closer and closer to the X axis, but never quite reaches it. What does that mean? Look at this graph. It gets closer and closer to the X axis as you go to the left, but will it ever reach zero? which means if you get, for example, if X is equal to negative a thousand, then F of negative thousand is equal to two to the power of negative thousand, which is one over two to the thousand, which is a very, very big number. But that's, that's um, in decimal, one over two to the power of a thousand is a very, very small number. So it's going to be 0. 0.000 and then some digits. And then five. Okay, 0 0.000005. It's a very small number. So is it really zero? No, it's close to zero, but it's not exactly zero. So the numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you can't really see it, but it's just continuously getting smaller, but it's never gonna be zero. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that line looks like it touches x-axis, but it's not actually touching it. It will never reach the x-axis, okay? So when a function approaches a line in this matter, the line is called an asymptote. So if you see a line where the line, where the exponential function never reaches it, but it gets closer and closer, the asymptote here, is the x-axis. This is the asymptote, okay? Asymptote is like the invisible wall where the graph will never go beyond and will never reach it. Mm -hmm. It's never gonna touch it. That's called an asymptote, okay?
So let's look at try number one. Identify the key features of function f of x equals base b to the power of x for base is equal to two and base is equal to one over two. What does that mean? Identify the key features for when base is equal to two, two to the power of x and one half to the power of x. Can you do it? What are some key features of those? Well, let's look at it together. Go to desmos.com and then we'll, we'll see how they look like. So function x is equal to two to the power of x. We looked at, we looked at it uh, in example one. What about another function f of x that's equal to one over two to the power of x. Oh, do you see any pattern? It looks identical, right? It looks very identical. What's, what's happening? So that's the two to the power of x graph. This is the one half base to the power of x graph. So let's look at the table to, um, to understand it. Okay, there. So in order to see the table, um, over here, f of x is equal to one. So that's the blue line, and this is the table. Okay, negative two comma four because what's what's the negative power do? Negative one over wait, wait, wait no, no 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 your base is still positive but one over two to the power of negative two is basically telling you oh you are gonna divide one over two two times by itself. That means you're going to flip the fraction because now you that you if you're dividing the division, then that's basically multiplication with your numerator with your denominator, right? So two to the square is equal to one half to the power of negative two power. That's equal to four. Okay, what did what happened because when you have a negative uh, power, that means you're gonna divide. So one is the default for a division or multiplication. So one divided by one half divided by one half is what this really means. That means you're gonna multiply two because you can change the division into multiplication by your reciprocal. And so you're multiplying two twice and that's four okay so so then negative one power will also have two right one over two to the power of negative one is two when x is zero it's still one any number to the power of zero is one so both graphs meet at this point and then when the powers get positive, then you have fractions because your base is fraction. So when X is equal to one, you get one half. When X is equal to two, you get um, one fourth. And then when X is equal to four, three, you get one, one 16 and then, and so on and then one over 32 and so on. So like it, 
it's kind of a reciprocal for the base two. Okay. So let's record that. How can we say? So compare the graphs. The asymptote, the both have the same y-intercept domain range and asymptote. Okay. However, when b is equal to two, the exponential function. Increases as x increases, and when b is equal to one half, the exponential function decreases and increases. Okay, what does that mean? So they do have the same y-intercept domain, all x are real numbers, range, all y's uh, are greater than zero. It's all positive numbers. It has to be positive numbers, right? And the asymptote is x, the x-axis, right? They have the same y-intercept domain, range, and asymptote. But the base two, the base two graph will increase so your numbers go your y values your function values go up as x increases so as x becomes bigger y also becomes bigger right but this graph when x becomes bigger left to right y is decreasing y becomes uh smaller and smaller as x becomes greater so their their directions, their end behaviors are different. Okay, that is example one. Let's look at example two. Graph exponential functions. A network administrator uses the function f of x is equal to five to the x power to model the number of computers a virus spreads to after x hours. If there are a thousand computers on the network, about how many hours will it take for the virus to spread to the entire network? So it starts at zero hours. After an hour, the virus um, spreads to one, two, three, four, five more computers, five computers. And then the next hour, this uh, for each virus, it moves on to another five computers and so on. So your exponential function is increasing by five every time. And it's not just one for one virus, it's, it's happening for all the viruses that's already, that's created, right? So at zero hour, you start with one virus. And then after an hour, you have five viruses. After two hours, you have 25 viruses. After three hours, 125, and then so on. You keep multiplying by five every hour. Oh no. So we're going to see how long it takes for the viruses to take over a thousand computer. After four hours, it's 625. After five hours, it's 3,125. So it's definitely between four and five, the hours of four and five, right? A thousand computer would be between 600 and 3,000. 3, so you can graph the function y is equal to five to the power of x and figure out when your, when your graph hits a thousand computer which is when y is equal to five. So what is x when y is equal to five? When y is equal to a thousand, x is about 4.3. So in this case, you don't have to have an exact time if it's not a good whole number, but it needs to be close estimate, okay? About 4.3 is a good estimate. All right, and then you can use a calculator to check if your answer is correct, which means you can write an equation. You can write an equation saying, so first we're gonna 
write the function um, five to the power of s. And see where. So you can use a graph to figure out when x is equal to what x is equal to when y is well, when y is thousand. Okay. So this is the table of. f of x is equal to 5 to the power of x. Okay, and so you can enter. So instead of using graphing calculator, since you guys don't have it, this is the uh, function table. Okay, that's x values, and these are y values, 5 to the power of x. Okay, you're going to plug in a, a 4.3. Four point two. Let's let's go for four point two. So these are just estimates. Four point three, and four point four, and four point five, and see which one is the closest to thousand. So if x is four point two, it's eight hundred sixty-two. If x is four point three, it's a thousand and twelve, thousand and thirteen viruses. 4.4, 4, 1,189.78367, and so on. So which one is the closest estimate? I'll say 4.3, okay? So 4.3 is a good estimate. 4 point, about 4.383 hours. So let's look at try number two. How long will it take for the virus to spread to 50,000 computers? We're using the same function. Can you figure out how many hours would it take for the virus, for the same virus to spread to 50,000 computers? See if you can figure it out by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, how can you figure it out? You can start plugging in your X values and see what your Y values are. You can look at the graph and see or you can use the table to figure it out, right? So in order for you to zoom, you can, you can make the Y axis uh, go greater. Like, oh, I want to see how many viruses, 50,000. So I'm gonna go until six, 55,000, okay. And you see that the graph reaches 50,000 at here. And that's like, and you can move the points so that you see what's closest to 50,000, okay. In order to double check, so it seems like it's more than six hours and less than seven hours, right? So it's 6.7 something. So in order to double check, you're gonna go to your graph and see which one is the closest. 6.5, start with 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23, 6.24, 6.25, 6.26, 6.27, 6.28, 6.29, 6.30, 6.31, 6.32, 6.33, 6.34, 6.35, 6.36, 6.37, 6.38, 6.39, 6.40, 6.41, 6.42, 6.43, 6.44, 6.45, 6.46, 6.47, 6.48, 6.49, 6.50, 6.51, 6.52, 6.53, 6.54, 6.55, 6.56, 6.57, 6.58, 6.59, 6.60, 6.61, 6.62, 6.63, 6.64, 6.65, 6.66, 6.67, 6.68, 6.69, 6.70, 6.71, 6.72, 6.73, 6.74, 6.75, 6.76, 6.77, 6.78, 6.79, 6.80, 6.81, 6.82, 6.83, 6.84, 6.85, 6.86, 6.87, 6.88, 6.89, 6.90, 6.91, 6.92, 6.93, 6.94, 6.95, 6.96, 6.97, 6.98, 6.99, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23, 6.24, 6.25, 6.26, 6.27, 6.28, 6.29, 6.30, 6.31, 6.32, 6.33, 6.34, 6.35, 6.36, 6.37, 6.38, 6.39, 6.40, 6.41, 6.42, 6.43, 6.44, 6.45, 6.46, 6.47, 6.48, 6.49, 6.50, 6.51, 6.52, 6.53, 6.54, 6.55, 6.56, 6.57, 6.58, 6.59, 6.60, 6.61, 6.62, 6.63, 6.64, 6.65, 6.66, 6.67, 6.68, 6.69, 6.70, 6.71, 6.72, 6.73, 6.74, 6.75, 6.76, 6.77, 6.78, 6.79, 6.80, 6.81, 6.82, 6.83, 6.84, 6.85, 6.86, 6.87, 6.88, 6.89, 6.90, 6.91, 6.92, 6.93, 6.94, 6.95, 6.96, 6.97, 6.98, 6.99, 6.100, 6.101, 6.102, 6.103, 6.104, 6.105, 6.106, 6.107, 6.108, 6.109, 6.110, 6.111, 6.112, 6.113, 6.114, 6.115, 6.116, 6.117, 6.118, 6.119, 6.120, 6.121, 6.122, 6.123, 6.124, 6.125, 6.126, 6.127, 6.128, 6.129, 6.130, 6.131, 6.132, 6.133, 6.134, 6.135, 6.136, 6.137, 6.138, 6.139, 6.140, 6.151, 6.152, 6.153, 6.154, 6.155, 6.156, 6.157, 6.158, 6.159, 6.160, 6.170, 6.171, 6.172, 6.173, 6.174, 6.175, 6.176, 6.177, 6.178, 6.178, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 6.179, 
6.723, okay, um, 6.722. So you can say it's closer, it's the closest to 6.723, or just round it up to the second decimal places if, if um, that's more, if that's okay. Yeah, so you can say it's closer to about 6.72 hours. So about 6.72 hours. Okay, moving on to the next page. So the exponential function is the product of an initial amount and a constant ratio raised to a power. Exponential functions are modeled using f of x is equal to a times b to the power of x, where a is a non-zero constant, and b is greater than zero, it's positive, and b is not one. Okay, so your base, if it's one, your, your graph is not growing. If you're multiplying it by one, um, then your numbers are not increasing or decreasing. It's just a straight line, right? But if your base is positive, um, it's gonna keep multiplying. And A is the initial amount. So we're gonna add the, the, another number in this function. So we'll also talk about what does A do? Okay, look at example three, write exponential functions. What is the written form of the function represented by the table? So if you just if you're just given a table, could you figure out what kind of exponential it is? Hmm. So when you start with zero, so when your x is zero, that's where you start from, right? Usually, if you don't have a like a number other than your base to the power of x, then you're gonna start with zero comma one. That's your default point. But it's not one. It starts with zero comma four. So that's the initial amount four. And then you're from four to 12, you're multiplying something, right? 12 to 36, you're multiplying something as well, and so on. So from the initial value, what are you multiplying to get 12? 12 divided by four is three. And 36 divided by 12 is three. And you keep multiplying it by three every time your x increases by two. That means your base is three because that's, that's what you multiply, your base, right? So your f of x is four times base b, which is three to the power of x. So when x is equal to zero, three to the zero power is one. So four times one is four. So that's why your initial point gives you your initial amount A, okay? And then when X is equal to one, you, you plug in um, one into this exponent, three to the one, first power is three times four is 12. So you get 12, okay, and so on. So that's your function. And then what's the written for the function represented by the graph? If you are given a graph, could you, could you figure out the, graph, um, the equation as well? Yes, graph is the same as a table. You just have visual representations. You should be able to look at the points, right? So by table, you can already, you can also um, write a table using the graph, 0, 128. 1 comma 64, 2 comma 32, 4 comma 8, and 5 comma 4, right? So 0 comma 128 means that's your initial value. A is 128. And then you're going to multiply by a number. 
your number is getting smaller. So you're dividing actually, which means your base is gonna be fraction, okay? So if you're dividing it by half, you're dividing half, divide by two, divide by two, and divide by two, that means your base is one half because your exponential is always talking about multiplication. So your base needs to be the number that you multiply by, which means if you, if you change your division, to multiplication is the same as multiplying your reciprocal. So multiply one half. So your base is one half. And that means your function is a times 128 times one half, that's your base to the power of x, okay? So just remember your function notation, f of x is equal to a times b to the power of x, and you need to figure out a and b in order to write the function equation completely. If you do not have a number for a and b, they're supposed to be a specific number for function. Your x is only the variable in your equation here. And f of x, of course, okay? You cannot have more than two variables in a coordinate graph. All right. So using that information, let's look at try number three, write an exponential function for each set of points. You have, you have a lot of points here. So make a table out of it, write, figure out what's A and what's B and write the exponential function. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So, your initial point is very important, 0, 0,3, because that tells you what A is. A is 3. And then from 3 to 12, 12 to 48, so compare your numbers, you're multiplying by 4. So your base is 4. That is your constant ratio. So your f of x must be 3 times 4 to the power of x, or part a. Okay, what about part B? Zero comma two thousand hundred eighty-seven tells you that your initial value is two thousand hundred eighty-seven. Okay, what is your B? If these numbers, the first two numbers are too big, look at the numbers on the back. So from uh, when x is equal to 3, y is 81. When x is equal to 4, y is 27. So 81 divided by 3 is 27. And you can check other numbers as well. Divided by 3, divided by 3. So in multiplication, you're multiplying the constant ratio of 1 third. So your base is 1 third. So the exponential equation for Part B is 2,187 times one third to the power of X. Okay, let's look at the next page. Application example four, the last example. Compare linear and exponential functions. Tell Alicia is offered two pledge options for donating to a charity. Which option will in increase the pledge amount faster over time? So she has two options to choose from. Option A, $100 for the first week, and each week after that, the amount increases by 25. Okay, so every week it increases by 25. Then option B, dollar of one dollar for the first week and then each week after that the amount triples so every week you uh the amount triples so you multiply by three every time which one increases faster so it seems like uh it seems like you're paying a lot less money in the beginning for option b because compared to a hundred dollars and one dollar is really small and then the next week, it's only $3. And then the second week, it's only $9. 
it's not even close to 100. But then as you go to fourth week, it's 81. And then fifth week, suddenly it goes way past 100 and it's 243. And by fifth week, option B, uh, option B's payment is uh, greater than option A. You see that? So option A is slowly increasing. Option B is very quickly increasing. So which option will increase the pledge amount faster over time? Option B. So option A is a linear function. It means it, it's gonna increase in a straight line. It's gonna constantly increase. Plus 25, plus 25. There's a, that's your slope. You go up 25 for every week. So your slope is 25 over one, remember? For linear graph. But then exponential function, you don't have a slope, but you have a base, a constant ratio. You multiply by three every time. So you have base three to the power of X. And this one is 100 plus 25 X, right? So then your option A is linear, option B is exponential. Since the ratio of consecutive terms in B is constant, the exponential function will increase faster over time. All the time, exponential functions increase much, much faster than the linear equations all the time, increase or decrease, okay? So the speed of increasing and decreasing are gonna be a lot faster because it's a curved line. Linear function is a steady increase or decrease. All right, look at, try it for the last time in this lesson. Number four, identify each function as linear or exponential, explain. Part A, f of x equals the number of branches at level x in a tree diagram where at each level, each branch extends into four branches. Is this linear or exponential? Explain. Part B, f of x equals the number of boxes in row x of a stack in which, in which each row increases by two boxes. Is this exponential or linear? Explain. Done thinking? Are you ready? So part A, is this exponential or linear? At each level, the branch extends into four branches. So if you start from one branch at each level, this is first level, it's gonna extend into four branches. And then second level, one, two, three, four. Each branch extends into four branches. So this is a constant ratio of four, right? So this is a, if you have a constant ratio, it means exponential it increases by a constant ratio of four. What about B? f of x equals the number of boxes in row x of a stack in which each row increases by two boxes. So first zero row, um, I guess you don't, you have a box. And then every row you increase by two boxes, right? So if you start with one, Second row, you get three boxes. Third row, you get five boxes. You add two every time. So this is not a constant ratio. It's a constant value. It increases by addition, right? So this is not exponential. It is linear. The constant value is like a slope. It's an addition. Exponential, your, you have a constant ratio and it's a multiplication. Multiplication always goes faster than addition. Correct? Correct. 
All right, let's summarize our lesson, exponential functions. Remember that exponential functions are modeled using the f of x is equal to a times b to the x power, where a is the initial amount and b is the constant ratio. So if your base is a positive number that's greater than one, then you're gonna have um, y values that increase, okay? If your base is a fraction, fractional value that's less than one, but it's still positive, you have a decreasing number, okay? So when base is equal to, when base is greater than one, your graph would look like this. It increases from left to right. If base is equal to negative, uh, wait, no. If your base is less than one and it's still positive, you're gonna get a decreasing graph. So from left to right, your, uh, your y values go decrease, and then it gets closer and closer to the asymptote. Okay, so that's your graph example. All right, guys, that was lesson two, exponential functions. We explored exponential functions today. Next lesson, 6-3, is about exponential growth and decay. We'll talk about the growth function and the decay function using um using our exponential functions all right i'll see you in the next video bye